Hey everybody, welcome back to Tech Odyssey. So today I'm here to take a look at a new budget phone from a company by the name of New Mobile. These guys have been around for a little while. I previously reviewed their G3 phone and now I've got my hands on the G5. So the G5 is a very interesting phone, $149 here in the United States, but it actually is marketed here in the United States. And a lot of times we get these budget phones well, they're not available here, like the Poco phones and some of the other ones, they're available overseas. They don't always support our network bands. They're not always up to date with some of the stuff over here. So this one, the new mobile G5, actually works out pretty well on the LTE networks here. No 5G, but you really wouldn't expect that at $150. Anyway, there's some neat little surprises in here and we're gonna go through and talk about the G5 today. But before we get into that, I do wanna say if this is your first time stopping by the channel, I appreciate you being here. If you enjoy the video, please hit the like and the subscribe button and the little notification bell if you want updates when new videos come out. Let's talk about the G5. And here we are with the new mobile G5. Now the first thing you're gonna notice here is it looks really gorgeous. I am a big fan of this purple color that they have on here it has worked out really well. This is not something that you typically see in a lot of other phones. It has like this metallic looking finish on it. It is made out of plastic. It's got a plastic back on it. I mean, that's not something that I wouldn't expect at this price point, $149. And actually as of today, which is the 3rd of January, you can find them on the new mobile website for $139. So that's kind of neat too. If you notice on the back, you've got this shiny complement of cameras works out pretty good. It's got a 16 megapixel primary camera, which actually takes pretty decent photos during the daytime, eight megapixel wide angle, and then it has a two megapixel macro lens and a two megapixel depth sensor. So you can take your portrait shots. I do like that they threw that in here because it does have the MediaTek Helio A25 processor in here. Not the most power, but it's power efficient. It has a 5,000 milliamp battery in here though, which is very complimentary and should get you well into a second day. Like if you kill this thing the first day, I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> Maybe watching YouTube for 24 hours straight. Physical fingerprint sensor on the back, which it works okay. I mean, it's fairly accurate, but it's not on the fastest side of the world. We'll go ahead and demonstrate the fingerprint sensor real quick. So press the button. There we go. I mean, it takes, it takes about a second, second and a half. I mean, it's not the fastest one I've ever used, but it is pretty reliable. So I will give them that. It also has facial recognition technology. So you can unlock it with your face, which is actually about as fast as the fingerprint sensor. So you have a lot of the modern things in this phone, despite the fact that it's a fairly inexpensive phone, $149, $139. So far from my experience with it, I think that it's worth that price. And yes, I've reviewed some other phones lately, like the Poco M3. It's a really good phone. It's got more power and a lot more things in this phone, but it's an overseas phone. It's very, very hard to get here and it's not compatible with all the network bands that we have. This one, FCC certified, works here in the United States, has access to plenty of LTE bands. This one's GSM unlocked and should work just fine on any one of the normal networks here. AT&T, T-Mobile, Cricket, Mint Mobile, Metro by T-Mobile, all that good stuff. Pop your SIM card, you're good to go. It has one single downward firing speaker. I wouldn't really expect stereo speakers in here. The speaker in it's not too shabby at all. And it also has a headphone jack on the bottom for those of you who still like to use wired headphones or wired earphones. And hey, it actually comes with a pair of earbuds inside of the box. It also comes with a power brick and a charging cable, which is something that, hey, it's nice that it's in there because some of the phone manufacturers like Apple and it looks like Samsung is following in suit are not going to put power bricks in their boxes anymore. So yeah, it's nice that the little guys still go ahead and put it in here. Now, again, I think the build quality on here is pretty exceptional. After having used this and played around with it for the last probably two weeks or so, I don't really have any complaints about it other than it picks up fingerprints like nobody's business. And that's just the way this finish is. You need to clean this thing off all the time. It gets kind of, yeah. It does come with a smoke colored case though. So you can put that on and it kind of hides all those fingerprints, but this also picks up kind of fingerprints and residue stuff too. So it's neither one of them are ideal. Definitely keep a microfiber cloth or wipe it on your shirt or whatever, but it's gonna pick up fingerprints and residue. Comes with USB-C charging on the bottom, which works out nice. I'm glad that it's not micro USB. We are in 2020, 2021 territory now, so I would expect that and they didn't disappoint. It has a 6.55 inch LCD screen on it, which I've been really surprised with. 
it looks good. The colors are nice and natural. It's not oversaturated. It's not washed out. So you can tell that they definitely place some emphasis on making sure that there's a nice screen in here. However, it's 720p. It's just HD. It's not full HD+. plus. It's got about 268 pixels per inch, so I think the density on here is actually okay. And again, it looks nice. It's great for whenever you're playing games, watching TV, watching your shows. This is a little on the underpowered side. This is not something that I'd be playing Call of Duty or PUBG or any of that stuff on. Fortnite, don't even think about it. You can play some of the normal stuff that's been around for a while. Alto's Odyssey, Boom Beach, um, Crossy Road, things like that work perfectly fine on here. So just for some light to maybe moderate gaming, you can get away with some of that stuff. But as far as hardware intensive, like high performance games, you're not gonna get that out of this A25 chip. Four gigabytes of RAM, 64 gigabytes of storage, expandable to 256, so you can throw an expandable SD card in there. That's nice as well. This phone is really just geared towards having a nice phone that's stable, that works well. It's got a very, very light version of Android 10 on here. It's not really skinned at all, which I appreciate. All that stuff would just compound the speed issues and make it sluggish and unusable if they tried to put all that stuff on here. So they went with a very, very neutral operating system skin on this, not really anything on here at all. Not a bunch of apps preloaded taking up your space you need to worry about deleting. I appreciate that. It did just get an update, so it's got a November security update on it, November the 5th. We are in January now. It's not surprising to me that there's not a newer one yet. Hopefully there will be a new one soon, but I've got other phones that are still running October and November security updates, so that's not really out of the ordinary for the industry. It's not a Google phone. It's not a OnePlus phone, so I'm not really expecting monthly security updates out of these guys. And hopefully this will get Android 11. As of right now, it's running Android 10, but... Again, at $150, I kind of temper my expectations in the software department. But the new guys have been around for a while, new mobile guys. And like I said, G2, G3, went to the G5, the X6. I've covered a couple of their phones before, and they're pretty reliable. And the hardware seems to be pretty good, and this seems like it'll hold up for a while. It's definitely at least one of these phones that you can use for a year or two. You don't have to spend a bunch of money on. If anything happens to it, you're not going to have any heartburn over it and it seems to be pretty reliable. If you're used to using a flagship caliber phone though, this is not something that you're probably going to be entertaining and this probably isn't a video you're gonna be watching anyway. This one is very much designed kids, college students, older parents, people who just want a nice reliable phone experience that works and you don't wanna to have to spend a fortune. These guys pull that off. They're very much at the premium level of the low end budget entry level segment. There's a lot of stuff in here that I wouldn't really expect to see in a phone this price point, and it's been surprising. It also has a 16 megapixel front facing selfie camera, and I gotta say, I think it actually takes pretty decent pictures. It's been surprising. Let me show you here real quick. So take a picture. Now the shutter on it's kind of slow, so you'll have to endure that, but surprisingly, I think it takes pretty decent pictures. It's not too washed out, it's not too yellow, not too white, very natural in the, in the color tones and the stuff, so I think that it takes pretty decent pictures. Again, the shutter's kind of on the slow side, but hey, it's pretty well loaded. 16 megapixels on the front, you got the nice punch out camera up here in the top left corner, so you don't have to worry about that intruding in on your use space on your screen. 16 on the back, you've got the wide angle, I, I think that they did a good job loading this out with good cameras that fit the price point very, very well. And it gives you kind of a robust set of camera tools at your hands. So even though you're using a budget phone, it doesn't necessarily feel like you're using a uber budget level camera. So I've seen some other phones before $100, $200 price point and the cameras are just atrocious. So the fact that they load this out with so many and they actually work pretty well, especially in good daylight settings, I give them a thumbs up there. Overall, I think that it's a solid phone for the price. There's not a whole lot out there on the market that has US brand reliability, that's been around for a couple of years, has a decent reputation, and continually makes phones that are inexpensive but have good build quality. So this one right here, if you're in the market to pick one up, I don't think you can go wrong at $150. I don't think you're gonna be overly disappointed. You'll probably be very surprised with what it brings to the table. But again, temper your expectations. This is not a flagship phone. This is a entry level phone but it's a shiny looking, well put together, well outfitted entry level phone. And I respect that. And I think that they did a good job with the selection for building this together. Very good balance. Dropping it down to that 720p doesn't give it better performance than a full 1080p screen. And also, it's still gonna look perfectly fine if you look at your Instagram or your Pinterest or your Facebook and all of that stuff. So that's all I've got 
on the new mobile G5. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them down in the comment section. I will get back with you. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like and the subscribe button and the little notification bell if you want updates when new videos come out. And as always, thanks for being here. I appreciate you watching and I'll see you guys next time.